Okay. Well, welcome to now our fifth uh, webinar series. And, uh, you know, it's, we've come a long way uh, from sort of about four or five weeks ago. And I really appreciate everybody tuning in on a Thursday night. Uh, I think we've got sort of over 600 people tonight yet again tuning in, which is, which is, which is great. Um, and tonight we've got a real special one tonight. We seem to sort of mix it up a little bit. We've missed a week, which has made us a lot easier here uh, with, with the uh, team and everything to get this one ready for tonight. But we've got a real special one for you tonight. Something totally different from what the, the previous webinars. Um, it's all about stallion management. Um, and this is absolutely key when it comes to breeding uh, from your stallion, or obviously if you want to put to, uh, to get your mare in foal, it, it quite often starts, you've got to have the stallion in the right shape, the right condition, the right temperament and everything else. So we're going to go through all that tonight. For the people tonight we've got on board, we've got a good friend of mine is Bart Kuhls from Germany. Um, he's worked at Shokomoda for got many, many years. Um, and if there's ever a guy that I sort of see as a mentor out there and knows everything there is to know about stallions, there's this chap. So please ask your questions to him. Hopefully he'll be able to ask them. He collects off 30 or 40 stallions a day. You know, I, can, I sort of start moaning when I collect off 10 or 20. Uh, but he does, he does that day in, day out. We've also got Professor Pat Harris, who's the Director of Science in Mars, uh, at Mars and Horse Care. Uh, this provides the science behind Spiller's uh, Buckeye Nutrition and Willigy Brands. So it's great to have her on board. She's going to talk about the nutritional side. Now, nutrition is obviously king to producing. Well, we might have to go. The rain started. There's nothing <laughs> like live. Um, so we might just start walking in, actually, so before we get wet. Um, I tell you what, every Thursday night, it seems to rain. I'm thinking we should change the time maybe to a Friday or something. It's not raining then. Anyway, you can stay outside in the rain. No, you can't. Don't come on in. Um, anyway, so... We've also got Jamie Gornell. Now, Jamie Gornell, we've been working with Jamie for many, many years, and he really does know how to pick these some lovely stallions. He's got some, some fantastic stallions out there, and he's going to be talking about two of them. One of them, we've had the great pleasure of being with us today, uh, is, is Cassianato, and also he's going to talk about Christian 25. So we're going to be seeing uh, Cassianato live here, and he's going to be talking about that. Please, as always, as we said before, please ask the questions. So we really want some questions from you. Uh, for me or, or for Jamie or for Bart or for Professor Pat Harris as well, uh, uh, anything you want to. So please start getting them in and stay over here and uh, hopefully relay them to me. Uh, we've also got a couple of poll questions. Actually, we've got four poll questions. And the poll questions we're going to ask you as we're going around and just to really get your feedback and how the, the, the night's going. We've got to really put out a big thank you to Spillers. Um, these evenings do cost to put on, and it's totally non-for-profit. <laughs> and the work that goes into them, you know, certainly not just here, it's really with Rachel and Eva and everybody back at the British Breeding, it takes an enormous amount of work. So we need these sponsors really to sponsor the evening, and I really thank you, Spillers. In fact, Spillers have sponsored a whole series of these, and I think this is the end of the series, so we really appreciate that. And tonight, they're gonna give away to one lucky winner, a 50 pound Spillers voucher. So uh, you get a voucher, you can go take it to your nearest supplier and pick up 50 pounds worth of feed. A bag of treats, I presume that's for the horse, not the person, I don't know, might be. Uh, a competition number and a Spillers cap uh, as well. So that we're gonna wait, do tonight. We're actually gonna weigh a horse and you've got to guess the weight. So it's, uh, see what you think. Uh, a big thank you to AC Jackson. Uh, they also um, have helped a little, help tonight as well and they're the ones that have created this amazing barn but we're going to be speaking a bit about the barn and how we house these stallions the importance of housing these stallions so tonight we're going to talk all about the sort of husbandry the, you know the management around stallions we're not going to talk about semen quality or collecting often we're going to save that for in two weeks time we're going to be doing that you know here for a webinar all about sort of the collection side and then after that, we're going to do all about the semen assessment. And I know people are really, really keen about how we analyze semen and how we process it. So the next webinar, as I said, is going to be in two weeks' time. Um, so uh, not every week. So it gives me a bit of a breather and all our team here. Um, so it's all about the collection side. Remember tonight, again, it's not for profit, but we do ask you at the end, you will get an email 
and we are raising money uh, for charity as we do on every one of these webinars. And again, it's the Horse Trust. If you haven't logged on to us before, the Horse Trust looks after rescued horses and ponies and donkeys, and they need your money really to keep going, especially in these really difficult times. It's these charities that are particularly suffering. So, and lastly, obviously, I've just got to thank the British Breeding for putting this on. I'd say the work behind the scenes, uh, I'm always absolutely amazed by. Anyway, let's kick off tonight. We've got an action-packed full bag uh, to show you. So we're gonna look around these barns. Uh, some of the stallions, we're gonna talk about some of the stallions we go, because we keep getting questions. Can we see more of the stallions? So we're gonna see some of the stallions. And then I'm gonna do a presentation at the end of the night as well. But Bart Kuhls is in, 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 over in Germany, and he's one of the panelists tonight. So hopefully he'll chip in, and I might be asking some questions, how he looks after the stallions, because as anybody, knows how to look after stallions, it's him. So, all right, we'll walk down first of all. So uh, we've got something like 27, 28 stallions in at the moment. So this is just the first one. This is uh, Fiego, is it Sarah? Yeah, absolutely, he's here. Um, his owner has been using him on her own mare this season. And uh, this is his breeding. So we're not gonna stand the stallions up. Oh, hey, up. he wants a bit of the camera. Um, we're not going to stand the stallions up tonight because we've done that on previous ones. We are just going to look down the bar. We've got a bit of a treat in here for you. Look at this little chap. He just arrived last week, I think. Isn't he adorable? What's um, it? Go on, yeah. tell me about it. Well, he's a Welsh Section A. He's uh, called Thistledown Iceman. Yeah. Um, from, uh, originally from the Tremendous Stud by Sam Sandy Anderson. All right, yeah, he sent uh, yeah. us a few in. Absolutely. Have a look at his breeding. Uh, um, this little chap's in the breeding, and then um, he's going to go off to be produced, ready for a ridden career next year. Fantastic. <clears throat> right, now this stallion just arrived today, uh, so we didn't realise we were going to get him. And, and I know if any of you tuned in before, what's quite close to us is rare breeds. Well, look at this chap. Uh, this is Whole Beach Iggy, and uh, he is a Suffolk punch mare. Uh, sorry, Mayor, Stallion, uh, get that right. Um, and, and Mike Clark dropped him off this afternoon, so a big shout out to you. And I really appreciate, Mike, your, your support in, in the course for this. And I know you're, you're, you're very passionate about your, your supper punches. But what's so interesting about this Stallion is in two weeks, well, in 10 days time, we've got something really exciting. We've got uh, the first ever sexed foal being born by this Stallion. Uh, from from a from a rare breed, so it's massively exciting. I just hope it pops out of belly, otherwise I might have to dig a hole and disappear. But uh, we're hopefully doing more sex semen, and we're going to do another webinar fairly soon, all about uh, sex semen as well. So we come down the barn here. We're going to come back to the table yeah, here. Okay. We're in. Um, we've got, we've got Woodland of Avalon. Uh, this is one of the Lynn Crowden stallions. Yep. Um, and he's um, in the stud books for Hanoverians, um, Warm Bloods, UK, and Oldenburgs. If you need a bit of power and expression in uh, putting into your mare, this is the stallion. Yep. Good job. And this is another one of the Lynn's. This is Frank Ferdinand. We haven't done much on the dress side, but a few nights on the show. Room. And, uh, and the eventing, uh, but this is his, this is his breeding here. All right, so that's just some some of the stallions we've got in the bar. We can't necessarily show show show, show them all. Yeah, do you want to see this one? Yeah. It's like they all want to chip in tonight. This is why he's only three. He's here for breeding, and then he's going to be doing the horse horses next year. Right. So tonight we're talking obviously all about uh, stallion management and uh, we've, we're very lucky. One of our, our yard manager, come a bit closer EJ, come on. It's, it's, all, about, it's all about, yeah, EJ looks after these stallions uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really trying to understand how these stallions are managed, what they get up to, what they do, what their daily routine is to really make them, they're, they're athletes out there performing. Now, some stallions you can just take out of the barn, jump on a dummy mare, and they clap straight away. Others do take a little bit of more work. So, start with EJ, just quite nice. What, what is your daily routine here? What do you do on a daily basis with these horses? Um, first thing when we come in the morning, we'll feed and hay everything, and just check around to make sure they're all 
well in fit. Um, and then we would start off, get a collection list. Pam usually from the lab gives me a collection list who I need to collect up in the morning. Um, and then I would put whoever needs to be collected on the walker just to warm the muscles up before collecting. Um, and they, then we'd bandage them up and take them around to the collection area. Um, and when they've been collected, have a little break, a bit of rest over lunchtime, maybe have the lunch, then they hopefully get to go out in the field in the afternoon. Um, and then have the tea about five o'clock and then bedtime. Right, yeah. so that, <laughs> that went away before you size the stake if you want to come out of there. Uh, and so, just come this way. With, so, Bart, can you hear me, Bart? Yes, I can hear you. So, I mean, EJ has a pretty much a, a lie in compared to you because EJ <laughs> starts at seven o'clock in the morning in Germany. What time do you start? That, that's nice, seven o'clock is nice. It's the middle of the day. We start. So, Middle in the season, about four o'clock, uh, because we have quite a lot of stallions and we have to that's, manage it. Anyway. That's four o'clock in the morning, or is that four o'clock in the afternoon? No, 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 in the morning. We are not students, we're workers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what's your sort of routine? How do you, because you've got so many, st I mean, how many stallions do you have there, Bart? Oh, we have quite a lot of stallions, about between 50 and 60, but they are no, not all in my place. So we have uh, a part with Helsand, they are in, in Denmark, a few are in Osnabrück, but the most are in my place, in Mühlen, at Schokermüller's place. And we collect about 30 to 40 stallions. If we have so much a day, we do it on two times, uh, not two times a stallion, two teams. So we are lucky we have two collecting holes, so we can do, um, in, in two parts, the the collection, and then in the lab we have to do everything together. But I have complete two teams for the for the high season from March till June, July, and then it's yeah okay. We start early because the vets need their their semen or the the customer need the semen somewhere in the middle of the day at least. So. Yeah, you have to finish it till... And how, how important do you feel routine is important for a stallion? Yeah, uh, the, for example, the stallion who starts in the morning at four o'clock, they always yeah. start, they always, or we try to do always quite the same order. Not a stallion one day seven o'clock, the next day four o'clock, the other day five o'clock in the evening, or something like this. So we try to do always the same rhythm for the stallion. This rhythm for the stallion in our place means before he goes in the breeding hole, he is walking on a walker or walking for, for 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes on a walker or in a, a walking machine or even if the riders want to ride before, they can ride, they speak with us. Um, what time the stallion should be ready for uh, the collection. So uh, this we do not because uh, we thinking it's important to write, but just to protect the stallions, the tendons and everything that it's warm, mm. uh, that they are moving, that the legs are, the, the blood and everything is good, that just to protect the stallions. That's why. Yeah, I, and I, I was going to come on to that a bit later. And I, I, was, I made mistakes, you know, we, 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 we learn as we go along. And I remember years ago, we used to get the stallions out of the stable and put, expect them to jump straight on the dummy. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of stallions that can do that. But then we, we saw a few stallions actually tie up and seize up after, especially in the winter time. So now everything is, goes on the walk or has some form of exercise. And it's exactly the same as you, but not so early in the morning, obviously. Uh, but uh, has some sort of exercise uh, beforehand. But we'll talk a bit about more about the exercise. But one of the most important things to a stallion, uh, I'm afraid we're going to talk about it, is the tea with the testicles. And they are so important. So we're going to talk quite a bit about them today. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> As on cue, I'm just about to go in there. I don't know how we're going to... Is uh, <laughs> right. oh, mind. <laughs> oh, when, when. <laughs> every time we do this show, uh, a stanley gets his feeders out and starts. Um, yes, so we were going to talk about uh, testicles in this this pic 
in this uh, video. Just push him back a little bit. You see, we'll distract him a little bit. Um, but the testicles, obviously, on a stallion are so important. And it's, if the stallions will let you, what you want to try and do is obviously see if you can palpate these testicles and, and, and making sure where they're going soft. So ideally, what you want is uh, fairly firm testicles and making sure that they are, um, uh, you know, not going soft. Now, the older the stallion, the more they're more likely to go soft. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, so maybe we'll, go, maybe we'll come back to it. Yeah, well, I think we're going, because we're going to have to do some close-ups down there. And I just don't think at the moment it's quite, tell, tell us when he calms down a little bit. Never worked with children or animals. But every time we got Big Star out, he did the same, exactly the same thing. I don't know what you're doing to him, Jack, but anyway, we'll come back to the testicles in a minute. I don't think. So, EJ, just talk to me. This, how you house the stallions, I think, is absolutely critical. And we're going to go through the housing and, and how they're looked after as well. So, this is a, a typical stable without the bedding, obviously. 15 by 15, this one is. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got the especially high walls, especially made for stallions. Obviously, they can't touch noses at all over the top. Um, we've also got this, the hay grill, so you can open this from the outside. You don't even know if you need to go in the stable to hay the horses, which is really handy. Um, and then here, we've got a built-in locker. Um, so this is uh, set up for um, a new stallion arriving. So we've got the collection coats in there, boots, bandages, and head collar in the grooming kit as well. So um, we provide all the kit when the stallion comes to us. And I think I've seen it in Germany, but I don't know whether your stables have it. I've seen these, these open grills here. Do you, do you have these in your stables? I've, I've seen them in Germany certain places. Yeah, we have them also. Yeah. And, and when you're building these barns, and this is um, AC Jackson who built this barns, we're going to be talking about them a bit. We, they, we specially designed this. We got some of the design from Germany with, with the light, uh, as you can see, the vented ridge at the top. So we're trying to maximize the light coming in here. But I think you can always tell a good barn is by the lack of cobwebs in there. I must admit, our old barn had lots of cobwebs uh, and its ventilation. So what AC Jackson did was that with their scaffolding at the edge of the building, they perforated loads of holes. So when the wind hit, uh, uh, the scaffolding uh, or the, 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 the cladding, it would come in and the cold air would come in back into the stable. And whereas it normally would just circulate around the stables, we can actually feel the draft coming out of these uh, holes and then it goes back out as hot air rises, back out through the vents at the top. So this is something, ventilation I think is, as we all know, is, is, is real, real key to housing the stallion as well. So little things like that, but again, that we, we <coughs> learned from. Are we, are we ready now? Are we? Yeah. I think, right. I think, so. I think he's popped it away now, so we can, we can get back onto the testicle uh, side now. So, um, yeah, so perfect. So if you can come here. So some stallions will or won't let you do this. Um, it's sometimes it's familiar. Um, uh, so all it is is going in and just feeding the testicles. Just feel how actually soft they are. Now, if they're spongy, it just means that the testicles aren't working as well as if they're harder. Now, the older the testicle, uh, the older the stallion, the more softer the testicle can be. And we're going to show you some PowerPoint presentations later. And it's really, I think it's important to just to know what your stallion uh, feels like. I don't, it sounds a little bit weird, but it really is. It tells you an awful, this is the engine house for producing semen. And if you don't know how they're functioning, it can, or if you can feel it, it can really tell you before you even look at the semen of maybe what the outcome of the semen. They're really soft and, and and not hard, these, you're gonna have not such good semen quality. Also, you wanna see the uniformity of them and also the epididymis. Now the epididymis should be, uh, is, a, is a, the, the back of the, the testicle, and I don't know whether we can see it here. Um, whether you're this. Yeah, maybe you won't, but I'll show you a picture. But when you go down, you can actually feel the tail of the epididymis at the back of the testicle, and that wants to be pronounced. Some people think, I've seen some people saying, oh, there's a, there's a lump on the back of there, but that's, that, that's meant to be there. Sometimes the testicle is rotated, and we'll see a, a picture of this later. And it can still produce semen like that, uh, but what you don't want is it testicular torsion where they really twist on themselves, and then they can see signs of colic. So, uniform testicles, and we always, if you've got stallions, 
it's trying to actually palpate them and just to see how they are. because they really tell you an awful lot of what's going on in there before the scene's even produced. Uh, um, do, you, do you agree with that, Bart? Yeah, complete. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> the only thing I want to say, yeah, but that's for sure, um, that you should um, see that the size. Oh, sorry. Is that? He's muted himself. Oh, yeah, I think you've muted yourself, Bart. Have you? So I carry on? Yeah, yeah I'll carry on. Just tell me when you're back on there. All right. Michelle, you're back on. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're back on now, Bart. Yeah, yeah. Say that again. You didn't hear me. No. Can you say it? Yes. Yeah, you muted. Me. Some, some. You, you lost it. We're you back on now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I was saying that it's quite important that if you look at the testicles, that they are similar, similar the same size. Sometimes yeah. you have a very small one or, or one very big. They are never or almost not always on the same face. One is down, one is more up, yeah. a little bit, but uh, they should be similar, the same size. Uh, I think that's also uh, uh, um, important, the same like the, the, the uh, what you say, the, it's, it's not a sponge or like it is. Yeah. And do you find in the winter time they can be slightly smaller than in, than in the summer? I think I think in in the winter it's maybe it looks smaller, mm. but if you see in the summer it's really cold, uh, warm outside. Yeah, yeah. They go yeah. down more because of the temperature. Yeah, yeah. So then yeah. they look bigger, but they if you feel them, they I think they are even smaller. If it's very hot outside, it's hanging down more just for the temperature to cool more down. But I think yeah. that in, uh, to the winter, it's more big. No, definitely. So now we're coming on, we'll go back on tech because I think it's a really important bit that we should stick on. So we're going to talk about, about that later in the presentation. But EJ is just going to go through. We have a, um, our daily routine board to so just explain what goes on here. So we have so many different stallions coming. It's not something like where Bart's, they've got the same stallions. We have different ones that come in all the time. So EJ, just tell us what goes on here. Uh, yeah, so this, this is really for my yard staff. Um, and I try and keep this updated the, the best I can. And obviously we have horses coming and going very, very regularly. Um, so I have the stallion's name down this side of the board and obviously the stable number here as well. Um, and then if they're on hay or haylage or on soaked hay or steam pay, um, if they go on the walker or not, because every single stallion is different, um, and some go on the go on the walker, some don't. Um, and then same with the turnout, um, or if they have boots or no boots, um, and what rugs they would have on during the day and at night, and what they do in the collection area, uh, which is quite important. So he's a very good boy. Yeah, very good boy. <laughs> is this me? It's yeah. <laughs> Then any special requirements that um, we need to know about or um, any, yeah, anything like, yeah, that they need on, uh, or, like bit bandages or things like that. I, I must admit, you know, it's so it's slightly different for the, a lot of you stallion owners out there. You obviously know your stallions inside and out and we are getting different stallions so all the time. So we need to know them. I must admit, I don't always see this boy. I love these comments. Very polite boy, but can be sensitive. Uh, that's a bit like me. <laughs> he needs yeah. lots of kisses and cuddles now. <laughs> well, uh, and so uh, it's, it's it's really important to to know because if someone's not here and they go into that stable, uh, and uh, you know, stallions, as we all know, that they, they can have another side to them, and it's so it's really important our health and safety. That brings on to. I don't know whether you can see this, but if if you can zoom into it. You know, the stallions, we categorize all the stallions here. So we do get some stallions that really need some special handling. And we categorize them as, as, as an A, which means just myself, uh, EJ or Josh can ha ha uh, handle them. I must be having um, uh, hard hats. So category B must be, again, um, permission given by me or EJ or, or Josh to handle them, but it's mostly us. But most new stallions all arrive as a category C, which we always say, no matter what people, even the little chap down there, we all say that's a category C until we get to know the stallion. And we always have two people with that stallion, but very soon we decategorize them 
sometimes amazing. it can be just the next day. It it's be, it's just, it's literally just a couple, like even a few hours just to get to know the world, let it settle in, make sure we know how he's going to react to the new, envi new environment and um, yeah, make sure we're safe and he's safe as well. Uh, and category D and, and uh, category E is really your, your mayors or anything else? As you can see on the board, most of them are a D. Um, the, 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 there's not many that are uh, a, a, a b or or c they're, they're all very long anyway and yeah. so we've got some nice quiet boys in here one, one c <laughs> no, one, one c, c. One c. <laughs> yeah but, that's, but it's sorry all right yeah i was going to go back actually to a question about your <laughs> testicles before right yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> my testicles right okay yeah um so somebody's there, actually Annabelle, um, hi Annabelle, she's asked uh, whether if you have a stallion that has um, asymmetrical testicles, is there anything that you can do in that kind of scenario? Yeah. Not, e not even. Oh, not even, yeah. sorry, yeah, sorry, you have to, not the same. Not the same. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you do get stallions with different sized testicles. All testicles are never going to be exactly the same, but they're pretty much fairly close to it. So. Um, yes, sometimes you get some, and you'll see a picture of one later where it's a really small testicle, and quite often those ones just don't function, or maybe giving you not very good quality semen, uh, but the other one can. And even with stallions with one testicle, uh, for one reason, uh, people can, uh, if you, they produce, sometimes they overcompensate and actually can produce nearly as much as two. So it's, uh, so, you know, they can usually compensate. Uh, but ideally, yes, you want two uniform testicles, ideally, on that. Um, but as you can hear, we've got 20 odd stallions here and this barn is so quiet and it's really important to keep the stress level. Stress affects semen. I can't stress, well, stress that enough, sorry that I'm there, but it really makes a big, big difference. If the stallion's stressed out, it affects this semen quality. I mean, do, do you agree with that, uh, Bart, about the stress? Oh, yes. Yes, I just spoke this year, uh, or see this year, uh, through the corona, What's not a nice thing, but for me and for the stallions, it was super. There were no shows, there was no stress at all. They were all at home, and it was very, very easy this year. First, the collection, they are relaxed because they yeah. have never traveling, they have no shows, they have no stress. Um, the semen quality was much better, uh, even more. So, this time we could really see how much influence shows or stress for a horse is. Um, now we didn't have any and the quality and everything was easier and better. Even the yes. collection, some stairs who are not so nice for collection, who have not a good, uh, uh, don't like to breed so much or so, so good libido they are even more fast because it's just in the rhythm. There's no, nothing at all. So yeah. stress, yeah, yeah, it's a really, really big point for- yeah, I think it is, people underestimate the stress and quite often I feel that you can't see the stress of some time. We had a horse that went off competing and he was, looked like a totally unstressed stallion. When he came back, literally it used to take a week for his semen to get back up to normal. And he, he looked perfectly normal, he didn't look like he stressed out, but, it's amazing what can trigger it off. So I think, yeah, stress is something we can really keep them down to. And um, Jennifer's asked, how do you help the stressed stallion settle? Are there any tips or anything I you think, might be able to help? I think them? it's really important. You see in here, the barn, we've got all these strange stallions. It's quiet, well, they're most probably kick off now, but it's as quiet as anything. You take the mare away from the environment, but we're going to talk about it a bit later, but it's trying to normalize stallions and not isolate stallions. I think once they're isolated, they behave differently. So it's trying to normalize them as best you can and treat them as a normal horse, but have it in the back of your head. But these are stallions at the end of the day. So we take the mare away from the environment and it's incredible how quiet these barns are. But anyway, I think, oh, sorry, you no, so as I said, I think routine has got a really big part to play in it as well. Um, and we're really lucky here because we've, we've yeah. this is specially made for stallions um, and we've got high panel fence paddocks, but turnout, if you can, is also amazing for just letting them be a normal horse and relaxing and being in a paddock. We're going to go and see that in a second. So just, we're just going to show uh, this in here. Uh, this is Sue the Blue. Is it Sue the Blue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah uh, and he's Blue. under the lights. We're only really just demonstrating on here. We get some older stallions that um, 
maybe for one reason or another, they can't go on the walker because they're maybe their joints. So we actually put some under the lights, just the one that before collecting, especially in the winter time. Mm -hmm. We even some, we give a massage to, is that right, AJ? Yes, yeah, so, can do. So yes. they give them a bit of a massage and just warm them up yeah. um, because some of the older ones might not want. But I think, Bart, you're lucky. You've got something that we haven't got. You put yours on treadmills, don't you? <laughs> so, um, which, which means they're going in a straight line, uh, whereas we go on horse walkers and go around in circles. But yours are on treadmills, is that right? We have, we have both. We have um, the, the walking machine, only one on a band walking. I have three in front of me, which we can use. And we have one walker who goes around and they built even one walker who goes about 20 meters straight or 40 meters straight and then turn around. So yeah, we have a lot of things um, what we can use for our studies in this yeah. place. I think your boss is a little bit more um, better with his money than, than EJ's boss. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's why you've got a, a little bit more. Uh, so this is Yates uh, standing that you saw last week or, or um, a couple of weeks ago, he's a new stallion uh, owned by Oliver Townsend. But turnout is, is, I think, is really important. We do find a lot of stallions have never been turned out before. I know some people don't want them turned out, but it's trying to de-stress these stallions and really get them to calm down. So in here, we have some really nice high fence paddocks. So we have, the, we have um, them up to eight foot high, some of these paddocks. So we can separate these stallions and keep them really, really quiet. Um, and get try and get them turned out ideally for a couple of hours a day. Is that right, EJ? Yeah, yeah, try my best. Obviously, it does depend how many cells we've got in at a time. Obviously, we're more busier. Um, then, yeah, I try. What, what I try and do actually is if oh, I've got to hold you there, EJ. Oh, I've forgotten sorry. already. Sorry, a cute poll question. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry, we were meant no. to. Sorry, before we go any further, <laughs> I get in trouble. Um, well, our first poll question we want you to answer. Are you a stallion owner? A simple question, yes or no. And also, um, Rachel, a second poll question, does your stallion uh, compete alongside breeding duties? So again, yes or no. So that will come up. We'll carry on talking. But if you can just answer yes or no. Sorry, EJ. No, it's, it's all right. It's okay. Um, yeah, so just saying, obviously, we've got, we've got a lot more stallions. Um, I try and get them all out for about two hours. Because um, any shorter than that, it doesn't seem really worth it for them. And then, um, I, if I've got quite a lot, I, I usually get some out one day and then the next lot the other day. So they all get to go out every other day, basically. Um, and then when we're a little bit quieter, uh, they all get to go out every day. So obviously, it depends on the numbers of numbers of signs. What I've got but some, but some standings to... actually don't want to go out for long either. No, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, some yeah, only yeah, for yeah. ten minutes yeah, and they're pacing yeah, up and down, and they, they, they want to come back in, don't yeah, they? So yeah. I think. It's all what we do is down to the individual stallion. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, I don't know whether have those poll questions come back in yet. Or are we a bit early? Sorry, Rachel, are you there? We have a result. We do. Um, we have again half and half. About fifty-one percent of our attendees are stallion owners. And good. Uh, so that is really good. And uh, we have. <laughs> 8% saying yes, their stallion competes alongside stud duties, and 72% saying no. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. So we we are, I must admit, a lot of, a lot of them obviously do compete, but most of the majority don't. And most of the majority ones here don't compete, and especially at the moment, obviously, with the COVID-19. I'm just going to bring you along here, because I know we can pan round to this building. I know I keep pushing AC Jackson, but I just wanted to say they're the ones that built this building. Um, and uh, did all, all what we've done here. Um, I don't know, you know, this sort of cost us sort of about £270,000 to put this up. And i tell you what, I know uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but we never had one bill after. I cannot recommend them highly enough, AC Jackson. So if you're looking for a building contract, just email me. I don't even mind sending you the pans over this. But, that you know, if somebody is building a place, they really are first rate. And I cannot recommend them highly enough. So... They built, now if you come under here, this is the, um, the bench that I was talking about. So I don't know whether you can pan up there at all. Uh, that can go to the waybridge now. Um, this is where you can see the vents. So the air hits the vents and then comes down into the stable and circulates around the stable. Uh, so that's where we um, uh, can get the, get the air going. Uh, so we've got two more poll questions now. 
We've got, does your stallion maintain weight easily? And do you feed stud specific food? Feed. So those are two questions on that. So now we're gonna come over to actually weighing these. Uh, So, along with the looking after styling, when stylings come to us, it's quite difficult sometimes to, you know, they're on a certain diet or a certain feed, and sometimes, you know, the environmental changes can make a big difference to them. They can pile the weight on, or they can lose it, but they're stressed out. So the Waybridge, I'm from the horse way, we've, been, we've had this Waybridge for many, many years, and there's certain things at this place I would not do without. Uh, one is obviously our great team. Uh, one is we always have, all use radios. You can see EJ, we communicate with all the radios on the yard. Absolutely brilliant when you handle our stallions. But also the Waybridge. Uh, and, the, and there's our teaser stallion. And the CCTV. So, though, but the Waybridge we could not do without. So I have to admit, we weigh the stallion. How, how often do you weigh the stallions, EJ? Uh, the ones that I have here all year round, uh, you weigh once a week. And the teaser mares and even the um, little teaser stallions over there weigh once a week and then all the stallions that come in for freezing or fresh and chilled that we don't know so much um, I would weigh them about at least three or four times a week yeah so you know yeah. Know that. yeah. so anyway tonight we've got this is Diamond or oh, India as well India. <laughs> uh, so we're going to put Diamond on the on the way bridge we better actually uh, shut this off actually so we uh -huh. yeah, if you bring her on and this is your competition tonight you've got to guess the weight of this mare. This is a Suffolk Punch mare, and you can win the Spillers Prize tonight, uh, which is, uh, you've got to put on your, I think, Rachel, is it called the Use Catch button? I think, down there. I think so, if you can, uh, oh yeah, you can, oh, you switched off, mate, so you know what it is. Uh, so this is a Suffolk Punch mare. Oh, she's off. <laughs> and um, she is, um, this is a Suffolk Punch. There's only 80 females left in the country. There's only 300 left in the world. And she's one of our teaser mares, so bless her, she's been absolutely great. So we've got the weight of that, have we, EJ? Yes, got so the weight, So yeah. we'll, we'll feed that back. Do you want to stick it on again? Got the weight bridge? Yeah. I've so, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, we just switch it on. And uh, just hang on two seconds, EJ. So, can you, oh, can you see me? Hmm? Yeah, so... Um, so we've weighed it. So we use the weight bridge also. I'm going to jump on that. I think for an extra bonus point... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see how, how to vote, but you could guess at what I weigh as well, I suppose. Don't be too uh, cool. All right. Yeah. yeah, I've been working hard lately, so I should, should be fairly true. So, now the Waybridge, I must admit, we use, we use a lot. So. Yeah, but that comes into the feed, and, you know, we're coming to one of the main management sides. It's got to be feed. Yeah, looking after these uh, uh, amazing horses. Oh, we haven't talked about teaser mares, actually. We... The teaser mares, yeah, you can bring around in a second, India, if you want. But teaser mares play a huge part in our process. Um, I think it's slightly different with you, Bart, because you have your stallions trained um, all the time. The But we actually have a selection. How many teaser mares do we have? Um, all together, we have six, do we know? Yeah, six. Yeah. Six, six, six all together. Yeah. Six teaser mares. Yeah. And I must all admit, different shapes, sizes, colours. I can't tell <laughs> They are everything to us absolutely everything and they they some stallions most of the stallions go on the dummy uh, but most uh, uh but there's the odd one that just prefers to go on a, on a teaser mare but bart do you have teaser mares or your stallions obviously they're all trained really well i presume to the dummy bart can you hear me is he gone no uh, he's still there, but I don't think he can hear you. Don't worry. If, he, if, he, if you come back on, Bart, if you can hear me, if you come back on, we'll ask you the question again in a minute. On the poll questions, have we come back? Have we got an answer to poll questions? Have you given that one, Rachel? Uh, yeah, I can uh, tell you that 72% uh, think that their stallion maintains weight easily. And uh, we have... 56% who do not feed a specific feed, uh, stud feed. So 44% that do. 
yeah just over 50 percent yeah so so the t's and mares so we will going back to that we will talk about the feed in a second but the t's and mares play about because some stallions with really poor libido we will switch these mares around i don't know bart can you hear me now or not no maybe not we'll carry on anyway just let us know when you when you can but we'll come on to the feed um, feed side now So on, on the feeding side, where did we start? Good there, yeah. Um, we, well, I've obviously been doing this for many, many years. And I was saying before, you know, to, to EJ about the different feed companies that we've used over the years. It's not something we want to chop and change all the time when you're happy with a feed company. And when a few years ago they said, look, we might be changing to spillers, I was a, a bit apprehensive, I must admit, to start with. But I have to say, the stallions, and you've all seen them over there, they look absolutely a million dollars. And yes, obviously it's a lot to do with your work, but this, the, the feed we find has been great. We had a stallion just recently that was just losing weight, wasn't he? And he went home something like 15 kilos heavier, yeah, wasn't heavy it? Heavy Heavy when he's right. And that's down to obviously the care that uh, the team have put here, but also down to the feed. So we've got Professor uh, uh, Pat Harris uh, on there, on the panelists. And, and as I was saying before, she, she works with Mars and, 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 and Spillers. So, Pat, can you hear me? Yes, hi, Dallas. Hi. hi. Um, and, you know, we've talked all about the stress side of things tonight and all the testicles and all that side. But really, you've got to be feeding, I presume, a well-balanced diet. So, you know, what would be the sort of foundation of a stallion's diet? You know, why is it so important, Pat? Yeah, it's a very good question. And, and for me, forage is that foundation. And uh, you walk past, your horses are all chewing. And horses really have this requirement, both nutritionally, but also behaviorally, to actually chew or eat forage and fiber. And if you don't give them enough, then you can get health problems. They can certainly show signs of your stress. They can get those gastrointestinal diseases, such as ulcers and colic or develop behavioral vices. I think that basically forage is the foundation of all horses' diets. And then the type of forage really depends to a certain extent on the individual animal, but also the energy requirements. And in general terms, the more energy they require, the less mature the forage that can be fed. But you do have to take into account things like the sugar content as they're getting older or laminitis prone. I think the other thing that you mentioned as well about haylage and soaking hay, I think that regardless of what you do, any forage that you feed should be of good hygienic quality. And that's important as part of your management, Tullis, you were talking about ventilation, but we also need to have the hay itself of good quality. So it needs to be low in dust, low in molds. And the other important, sorry, one other thing, just, just to pick up. One of the things people don't realize is a lot of our forages in the UK are actually low in protein and quality protein. And they're also quite low in micro and macronutrients. So once, although I think forage is the foundation, you usually have to balance it with an appropriate balancer. And that's to provide your amino acids, your macro, micronutrients and vitamins. And, you, and I presume you have to take into the account a lot of time, you know, the, like you say, the age of the horse, uh, whether he's doing exercise or whether he's not doing exercise uh, and so on. I presume that's correct. Yeah. Oh, I mean, got a, got a, sorry, you got a question from Faye. Sorry, what's that, Faye? Um, actually, a question from James Crabtree. Um, right. He's, uh, he said, why do you not feed the same as fed at home? Um, is the change in hard feed disruptive to their GI tracts? Um, that's it. Did you, did you get that one, uh, Pat? Yeah, I mean, I think it's to EJ. Certainly change is actually a big issue for horses. And I think you said that earlier on, that change in environment. And people often think Stop. that it's just the hard food, so the, the complementary feed, but it's also the forage. So you do have to try and change things over um, carefully. But equally, just changing horses from being outside to inside. So keeping them moving as EJ does, keeping them out with that Dr. Green and sunshine and, and helping. But you're right, change and feed is one part of that environmental stress of change. Absolutely. 
and I think that's where the waybridge comes in. It, it's fine if you're looking after your own stands, you've got the same routine each day, but when they're sent away, we might not be riding them quite so much, or they might not be ridden at all. And we all know when you can visually see the weight go off, it's virtually too late, and they might only be with us a month. So putting on the waybridge two or three times a week for takes 20 seconds, so you can actually see whether, and it can easily go the other way, where they can pile on the weight if they're not careful. So uh, because they are in a different environment and some are really chilled out here while they might be stressed at home and maybe the other way around. Uh, but usually collecting off them and doing that, it's usually quite a, it does calm them down and usually in quite a, a, a nice calm state. So, yes. Yeah, so, um, I don't know whether you've asked this question here. Why should we be careful regarding starts and sugar intake? Pat? Yeah, I think it's a, a thing that people are realizing that we know that if you feed a very large meal that's rich in starch and sugar, you can cause digestive upsets. We all know it can cause diarrhea and laminitis. But I think there are animals now that we're understanding that they are more prone to suffering from laminitis. And certainly if you're feeding them as high starch and sugar. And one of the things is that as horses get older, they actually start to respond to the sugars and the starches in their diet by producing more insulin they become more <laughs> And right. so actually, not only are those animals that, in, that are unfortunately prone, but as these stallions get older, and many of the stallions are older, we need to think about feeding them diets that are restricted in starch and sugar so that we don't promote those big peaks. And it helps to reduce the risk of laminitis and digestive upsets, but it never eliminates, but it starts to reduce it. So. We're all now increasing the fiber, you know, using restricted starch and sugar, trying to reduce the risk of ulcers and laminitis and things. And in particular, these older horses, you've mentioned it before, we need to make sure their diet is very balanced, make sure we're trying not to put too much weight, but there also some older horses start to lose weight. So it's that combination that you're trying for. Yeah, and obviously when they're going in the breeding shed, we, we don't want them like a bottle of pop either. We want them to be <laughs> uncontrollable, the same when you ride them. But, you know, we see obviously sort of the obesity side as well as the malnutrition. Both these are set to affect the inequality. So an overweight standing, you quite often see the sheath areas are a little bit more swollen. If that's more swollen, there's more fluid around the testicles. There's more fluid around the testicles. That has a negative effect on the semen quality. So it's really important we get the try and get the stallions as balanced as we can, weight-wise and condition-wise as, as, as possible. Yeah, um, and I think, tell us, as you were saying, I mean, a lot of horses, and I know a lot of your horses, they can manage on a good quality, hygienic quality forage and a balancer. And they can actually perform really well, look well, they, they can maintain weight. And then if you need to add some additional calories, you can try and use something that is a more controlled starch and sugar, and you can use within that some oil supplementation. So there are ways to do it without risking them. So, and the other important we've talked is you've got to make sure the quality of the protein. So you're really doing a balanced in the micronutrients, but we're also giving them the right quality amino acids to support sperm production, muscle and everything. And, and would you recommend that they send, you know, if they get hay, the crop of hay, sending that away? I know I think spillers do that all ours. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to analyze the hay, <laughs> is that important to make sure it's good quality? Yeah, I mean, I think there's two. You've got the hay to think about the hygienic quality. I think it's also useful to know what your hay is like for, it, you know, what's the protein basic level, but you're still going to have to support it with those amino acids because the trouble is, Hay is variable in the quality and the amino acids, what I mean about quality is there are some amino acids that if you don't have enough of, the horse can't build the proteins they need to build. So they are limiting amino acids and if you don't have enough in the diet, the horse can't store amino acids and so it has to get rid of it. So you have to add those qualities. So the protein in the hay, as I say, just gives you a guide to that basal, you still in most UK hays have to balance it, but it gives you an idea of how mature that hay is. It gives you an idea of the energy level. So I know EJ, you can adapt your hay. So animals that need a little bit more energy, you can still keep them on forage, but you choose a forage with slightly less energy, that's more mature, it's slightly more stemmy, got more fiber. 
So then you can adapt to your animal and you're lucky you've got different things you can try with your horses. And that's yeah. how you do it, isn't it, EJ? You adapt and use. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, um, I mean, most of the ones that are here all year round are now in, in the summer, they're just literally on a balancer, ad lib hay or haylage, whatever um, they prefer, and uh, out of grass. And that's literally, they, they collect on that absolutely fine and, and the, uh, win win as you just saw he's he's a big good yeah. big lad he does yeah. very well and um yeah he's just on a balancer and obviously ad lib ad lib haylage and goes out in the field as well and then in winter i have to change it slightly because obviously the grass is not not as good as they are in summer uh, but they're all year round they are on ad lib hay or haylage definitely without a doubt great well thank you very much for that pat well, you can see all the the, the, the bags here from all the, the, the full range uh, uh, was there anything else you want to add to that pat or um but uh, i think um, uh, i think we've covered covered most bases there no i think that's great happy for any questions as i say we've done these tips for feeding stallions and they're very very um trying to be very clear and concise so i think here is very much about giving that enough quantity of the right quality forage enough energy we've talked about that um tell us and the point is about the energy they are using more they're probably in breeding about 25 percent more energy than they were at maintenance but there are some animals that put on weight some animals and it was interesting in your poll that a fair number are easy keepers so those are the ones yeah. that are good quality forage that protein with those essential amino acids and then this balancer to make sure you've got your vitamins and minerals that help sperm quality and quantity. And as I said, the restricted starch. So I think those tips that we've actually picked up in discussion are sort of highlighted here, but you know, the horses yeah. you're feeding, the stallions you're feeding are exemplifying this pattern in these tips. And did you have a, was there a month, was, I can't remember, Rachel, was there something, if you put up a screen, yeah, they've done that already, brilliant, yeah, that's great. Well, I really appreciate uh, Professor Pat, Pat Harris for coming on tonight. I think the last time I was, thought was we were downing uh, porn star martinis in London, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, with EJ as well. Yeah, so we, 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 know, we know what your favourite tipple is now. Uh, I like it too, as well. But I really appreciate uh, your insight into that. And as I say, the, the food and diet side is absolutely fundamental to any stallion, really. Getting that right, and hopefully everything else will follow on as well. Um, Right, so moving on, um, just before we bring our first uh, stallion out, uh, we were asked before, is there any supplements you can give, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, um, there is something you give, uh, we've had a couple of questions, you can, but this obviously goes with a, a normal, well-balanced diet, um, it's something called SPM20, and this can actually help improve the semen quality. Now, it's not a sort of magic wand out there. It's not going to turn an infertile stallion uh, or to, to something, but it, what it can do is increase the semen quality, uh, maybe just over that threshold and actually increase it sometimes up to 20%, depending on the stallion uh, themselves. So we've carried out a lot of research with that. That's with obviously with blue chip and that's SPM 20. So that's worked very well. Do you want to get um, the first stallion out? Yeah. Uh, so if there is stuff that you can do. So Jamie, this is, over, over to you now. We come come over here, um, this in there a bit. Um, we're really lucky. We've just um, had uh, Jamie's brought his stallions to us for quite some time. Um, the, the stallion we've got here uh, is Cassianata. Um, can you hear me? Okay, Jamie. Yeah, I can hear loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. But, so, so Jamie just talked me through 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 this boy of oh well he looks an absolute picture, doesn't he? The light shine. Yeah, so yeah. so very proud of this horse, it's Cassianato. Um familiar to a lot of uh, English people over here because he jumped with Michael Whitaker on the European team um, in Arken in two thousand fifteen and then in two thousand sixteen he participated in the uh, Rio Olympics. Um multiple Nations Cup winners at five-star level with Michael. Um, he um, also the European Championship to help qualify Britain for the uh, Olympics in Rio. Um, Nick Skelton was originally the person that found him, uh, selected him for himself. Uh, but then we're having big star 
he sort of thought this horse would fit the Michael. Uh, it's still owned now in a partnership between Gary Witterson and uh, and ourselves. Um, I'm a huge fan of this horse. I've huge, always been a huge fan of him. Uh, really, really excited to welcome him to our program. What, um, what's his What's his stud fee, Jim? He's a thousand pounds plus VAT. Uh, ah, and how okay. we're running yeah. How we're running that is also it's up to three inseminations. Um, yeah. You know, I tried to mix that between chilled or frozen, depending on his competition uh, schedule. Um, but yeah, he's yeah. We're very, very fortunate and looking forward to getting some semen with you guys there now. Um, yeah. We've got a lot of orders for frozen semen back to Germany, actually. Um, right. Good. And I think we've got a video of him as well, haven't we, Rachel? Yeah. The Paul, Paul Schockemoll has also ordered, uh, I think, around 50 horses of semen from him now as well, which I think is very interesting to be selling semen back to Germany. Um, Let's say, to talk to him, um, I'll watch the video, he's uh, so Cassini Kidam de Ravel, uh, which I think is really uh, popular in Germany to go with uh, a German horse stallion to a French stallion. Uh, you generally get a stronger back from a French stallion, uh, but that technique and rideability from a, a Holstein horse. Um, this video actually is from the Nations Cup in Le Bourg when he was only 10 years old. And uh, Gary tells me at this stage the horse is still in fox hunter level. Uh, still just walked straight into the the ring in the ball there and actually uh, jumped, um, jumped double clear in the Nations Cup, which helped to win the the, uh, the first place there, which is very unheard of really. Also green to go into a ring that, that size and be as bold and brave as he is. Um, and and, uh, and uh, how have you had him for now, Jamie? So just over 12 months, um, we sort of took our time out with, um, we had quite a hectic schedule before he came to us, I uh, just wanted to make sure, give him a really good in period. I know, I know you think, think I, on, I've spoke, spoke several times about, I know you think, think, think an awful lot of this, this chap and he's really sort of settled in now and he's nice and, mm. you know, he's nice and quiet and settled down now, isn't he? And uh, uh, Yeah. Because the, the thing with this horse, he's, he's ultra intelligent. He is so intelligent as, and such a character to him. That actually, nice. that bedding in period and that management stage, you know, we wanted to make sure he settled in our stable uh, with other horses, goes out in the field, trusts me, likes me, a nice staff and everything. And he's a real part of our family here. And yeah, he's such a loving horse and really... Uh, he, he, as I say, hyper intelligent, I'd say, with how he is. And I hope that I sort of, I know with you guys having him there, you sort of, he's always, EJ always talks very highly about having him back and enjoying him being in the stable there. And he sort of, I, lovely I, horse I have to, to say, he's, really. a, he's about the best stallion to collect from. He just, he <laughs> goes into that breeding shed he did this morning. He, <laughs> he, he gets out, he yeah. wash him off, and he's straight on the dummy. He's, he's back out. You'll be wanting a discount soon, actually, because I better not yeah, go on about. Right. I better not go on easy. <laughs> well, that's, so, that's why we sort of we sort of left him there with. Uh, I left my groom there, rider, to ride him a bit while he's with you guys. So at least he just rides him in the morning to keep him warm, and then lets you go collect from him. But generally, I would imagine five ten minutes, and he's back out and under the in the wash bay again, normally, yeah. isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's, he's, he's yeah. very easy. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it couldn't be easier. And it's a video finish now. So, sorry, who is it? The pedigree's on that. Oh yeah, they're going to leave that. So the next stallion he's going to be joining us hopefully fairly soon. He's not here tonight. Is Christian Twenty Five? Bart, can you hear me at the moment or not? Are you still? Maybe Bart can't hear me. Still, I, th I think you've got maybe a problem with your with your, your voice button, Bart. But. Uh, but, to, you know, obviously, uh, is there a video? Can you play the video for us, um, uh, Rachel and Christian? Yeah, and, yeah, so, Jamie, obviously, talk about this stallion. You know, this stallion, yeah. obviously, been here a few times, but I know more about Cassinato. But, Christian, yeah, can you explain a bit about him? So, Christian, we've had him now for three years. Uh, we bought him from Germany, from Søren von Ronne, who was a breeder. Very, very famous stallion in Europe. Um, He's um, again a horse that we've sort of competed heavily in sport, and 
He's bred quite a lot the last few years now. Um, the offspring's doing very well in the sport. Um, oh, wait, he's, just, um, I think Bart's back on there. Bart, can you hear us? I hear you very well. I don't know why you don't hear me. We, we do. We do. <laughs> yes. we, we, we do know, but you know this horse and you know where he come from, don't you, Bart? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I know this horse is a four years old. A friend of mine, uh, Gilbert Bergman, he was making him uh, as a young horse to a really good um, jumping. Yeah, he was a good jumper, but uh, he built him uh, for, for till the S class. And he was breeding there. And I even used him as a young stallion already for my own mares. For your, for so your own mares? Well, that, I think, Jamie, if that's not an endorsement of your stallion, I don't know what it is. I mean, uh, Bart yeah. has got the pick of 60 stallions, and he's, well, that, that must say something. Uh, but yeah, sorry, well, uh, Jamie, for cutting in there. I just knew Bart. No. To to so carry no, on, Jamie. Yeah. I think it's very important to also hear, you know, it's I mean, Bart, again, world renowned sort of expert in the field of, of stallions. So to hear what's happening back in Europe where you know, what stallions they're choosing is very interesting. And again, Shokamola have, have used this year uh, 50 doses of Christian semen and pre ordered for next year another 50. Um, again, due to his offspring, uh, he's coming into you guys shortly to freeze for Australia and America because it's a lot of good offspring down there um, from him. I think, the, you know, Bart will back me up on this, but I think the, the interesting part about Christian is. Um, Sort of Chris, so he's by Cartani, who the mother of Cartani is um, uh, a mare that won the Arkham Grand Prix with Soren von Runner, uh, best mares you know of, of our generation, um, and then called Taggy, um, and then Christian's mother herself jumped the Olympic Games in Athens, and the grandmother was the mother of Lord Petsy, which again one of the fam most famous stallions you know from Bachman Stable, um, so I think it's a lot of sport horses but also on the breeding side a lot of good horses out of the family line not just what Martin's brought through himself um as really good well-known young stock coming through but just the whole history there is looking promising really from him but and interesting what's this stud for you jane so he's he's again we've got him this year at a thousand pounds plus vat um again we sort of felt like it's quite value i i both uh, because you know we want to help breeders and work with people to try and get you know good young stock on the floor in this country um, from our stallions that hopefully we, we believe in is doing a good job and, and breeding the future for sport riders over here uh, and again that's the terms of up to three in seven nations um, if you're not lucky with the, the first time but hopefully uh, they all take on the first go but yeah, yeah it's been working very well um, Good. Good. But I think, I think it, interestingly, as a comparative there on both stallions, the sort of why it's important to us is they're both quite different in type. Cassianato is a little bit smaller, um, a bit more Holstein type uh, in his body. Uh, as Christian's taller, a bit lighter, longer legged. So just two different types of mares. So I think at least we give uh, different, um, different options to, to our breeders we work with. And do you prefer uh, riding stallions to mares or geldings? Have you got an affinity or does it really matter as long as obviously comes to good? But, so. um, per, personally, our sort of business um, plan is stallions and mares. Um, we, so we get geldings sent in to ride uh, here, um, but generally we have stallions or mares and we take embryos from the younger mares. Um, the stallions are all sports stallions. We don't have any older retired stallions here. Uh, we have Christian Cassinato, a new Chaco Blue stallion um, called Chagaloo. Uh, Chaco Blue Contagos Palo Bay. Um, it's coming through. He's an eight-year-old one. Um, so it's just, um, we, we like to have less number, but high quality. And try to, uh, yeah. So I know it's obviously do a bit really of there. And I know James Crabtree, he, he just built a brand new centre up at mm. uh, up in Yorkshire, very close to you. So you, you couldn't have a, uh, giving you a bit, change a bit of a plug, but you couldn't have a better repro bet on your doorstep, I must admit. So, no, but, no. Um, um, yeah. but, but thanks very much, Jamie, uh, for that. I really appreciate it. And obviously I appreciate you, you, you bringing on uh, Stanion's uh, uh, 
to us to, to collect some freeze for the worldwide market. No, uh, thank so, you very much. It always really well. Uh, just so, just moving on now to on the, the uh, standing management side again. One thing we haven't talked about, we can talk about more upstairs. They're all important. I keep saying the most important thing is the stress, but actually health testing. All these standings before they come to us have to be health tested for CEM, EVA, and EIM. We're going to talk a bit about that more upstairs. It's hard to sort of demonstrate it here, but uh, it's important. The standings, obviously, pre-season are all health tested. Uh, but one of the things, when we're looking after stallions, uh, we've got to find ways of controlling that stallion, looking after that stallion. Now, some stallions you can lead on a, on a head collar, uh, like this time. Uh, Tem's going to be our model for the <laughs> night. Um, so, EJ, if you want to just grab one of the, uh, maybe yeah, we sure. start off with uh, one of it. So, it's really important that handling these horses that we're in control of, but we're not in control of the animal. It puts not just... The, the animal at risk, it puts ourselves at risk. So there's lots of things out there that we can help. So some, I might, some people might say, well, I'll never put that in its mouth. And you know, you know your standing is a lot better than I do, um, but we have got to be in control of this animal. And some people come in and say, right, all I want is to have them on maybe a chain. And we're happy to work with the stallion owners, but if we feel that we can't control the animal, we have to go with something that we control. So one of the things we use is, is the chifney. We use that a lot. And I know in the wrong hands, you know, chifneys can be quite severe. So do you, do you want to just put this one on, yes. EJ? Yes, we've got here, we've got a straight bar chifney, which I, I, I really like, um, especially for the younger horses. Um, because obviously I've got, a, I've got a port here. And um, we I actually, this is your Thames for the collection area. Um, so we, he, he literally just used a straight bar chifney and don't, he's so good, we don't really necessarily need to use it. But, um, I'll just put that on. Yeah, just put that one. Yeah, yeah. So this is just putting the chifney in now. There's different ways that you can use this. Um, obviously, you can just put it in, and, and um, because we can can actually use the chifney on the bottom ring just with a rope, which I think we have a rope here. And this is the way that I we used to do this for years with this method before we used to go in the collection barn. And we used to put a, put a rope, quite a long rope, didn't we, EJ? I don't know what yeah. you were here when we started to change over. And no, uh, you'd already had this uh, fancy and, uh, and, and we used to use the, we used to handle the stallions with a long rope, so if they reared or anything, we can keep control. I must admit, I very rarely carry a stick. I use my voice an awful lot with the, with the stallions. I think they listen, learn to your voice. And then I met this, this German guy from Schockermolers. Bart, can you still hear me? Yes, I still hear you. <laughs> I know what's and, coming. <laughs> you know what's coming. And, he's, and we have a conference every year. Now, we freeze about, uh, I don't know, we have a, about 110 stallions roughly come through our centre every year. Bart deals with hundreds of stallions. And we meet up once a year just to go through... We, we're a total open book and we can learn more in two days than I think we can a year because we feed back our experiences. And, and uh, one of the things that Bart told us is, and it's this German, I saw an old video back in the 1930s in Germany and they were using this method, is where they use the double rain system. So they have, they, they, they use, so they stand, is, is this right Bart? So you stand next to the shoulder. So can you explain a little bit more how, why this works so well? two rain system as opposed to a single rain part? Yes, um, with a single rain, if you do something, you always push the horse behind you. So you are always in front of the horse. And with the both reins, you can be next to the shoulder. So you have protect yourself. He cannot kick you in the front. He cannot bite you. He cannot kick you from, from the behind because you're in a place he can never do anything with you. And the horse now, if you have a mare in front or something, the dummy, he can concentrate on what he has to do there. And you can control everything. Yeah, and especially on young horses, I find it works, works well. I must admit, when I first started doing it, Bar, I have to admit, I did not like it at all. I found I was used to the, the, the rain and uh, you know, we, we persevered with it. And I must admit, um, I, you must redo all your horses. I think we do about 
percent of our horses, especially the youngsters, and training them on the dummy, exactly like you say, you can pull them back and pull them forward. Is that correct? Yeah. You can, like this, it's like riding. You're just next to the horse, but you can manage everything with the horse. You, you can, you but can. I do. You want them long enough, um, so if they, if they do, that you've got some control, but you don't want them too long that you're going to get your legs wrapped around them either. So it's trying to get that fine balance of it. But I do urge people out there just to try this system. Uh, you will like it to start with, I can promise you. But very, especially on the young horses, it's very easy and much easier to control them. So uh, that's, I do like this system, uh, I must admit. And keeping hold of the outside shoulder as well. Yeah. And then thinking. So can you grab one of your yeah. other, can you grab the, um, uh, maybe the head collar? Yeah. So the good old Jatem here, what a, what a model he is uh, uh, for it. So EJ, if you can just put that on for us. So this is a, another, Good, good friend of mine who, who showed me this uh, quite some time ago was um, is, is using uh, is just like a, a head collar uh, for it, but a lot of thoroughbred studs use this method as well, so they can use it in different ways. Um, and you can use it several ways when you use it. Again, we're going to show it tonight. And uh, I'm going to get bored of this now. <laughs> Well, such a good important things with the head collars, and if you do want any of these, we can get a hold of them for you. It's, it's, we get these from America, and it's making sure they haven't got the square rings here, because you have to get the, see here, sometimes you can get the head collars as square rings. They've got to have round rings, so this chain, if one of you beautiful, can go through it, and you can do it, first. it can go under, up the other side. You can clip on there. Or if it's still, if you've still got quite a bit of length, you can clip, clip back. back on, back onto there again as well. So it gives you a bit more control. So you can, and we find this works very well. So if you've got a really quiet stallion, because when, we're going to talk about this later. When you're in the breeding shed, sometimes minimal restraint. Um, if they feel they've got too much going on and they're too restrained, it can put them off. Uh, the collection procedure. If they're nice and quiet, and some we will literally have hold in a head collar, won't we? Yeah. Literally like this. Yeah. Not very many, but yeah. we will uh, uh, do, do this method. And you have a nice long, there's a chap called Dixon Barner who, who did this. So you can do this the one way, and you can show us the other way. Yeah. yeah. So you can, the other way, if you want a little bit more restraint, you can literally just go over the nose. And it's, it's quite, and it's quite straightforward with that. So it has a little bit more control. And this is the way that I know with, with Dixon was doing it, this is the way that he handles a lot of his stallions. Uh, and they have this nice long rope as well. And, and they use this with, with, with a stopper on the end. Uh, and the other method is you can actually put it through his mouth. So that's the sort of the, the third way that you can do it. So you can literally bring the chain down. Uh, poor chap, I don't want to do everything with him tonight, but you can actually put, put, this, <laughs> put, put this through his mouth as well. So I know on a lot of thoroughbred studs, that they, they use that method. But you, you don't use this method, do you, Bart? Please? You don't use this, this, this particular type, do you? Well, I, don't, I, I don't like this at all because I think I've seen uh, in, in, in the farm, they have to move the stallions always with, with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, thing. and then the grooms, they are always, if they are not fast enough or the stallions want to go faster, they're always pulling them and they, they get with the head up and I don't like this. Um, I think if you are with the stallion talking with your body and say, okay, I am, you're okay, but I'm the bigger one and we do, we are good friends and leave him, then you can manage it like this and not with a string or like something like this. I don't um, like uh, this. I've seen and, and with Dixon for sure. He do yeah. job with and, this stuff, but and, I don't like this too much. Yeah. And I, I think it's, it's, it's down to personal, personal preference at the end of the day, because, you know, Dixon, as, as you know, would be a, he's a sort of, uh, God, he's a stock stallion man. I know they use this a lot in America. I mean, we do find it quite helpful for the stallions that are really, really timid and quiet in the breeding shed. Uh, we tend to, to, to use it. Have you got the last one, yeah, DJ? Yeah. You want me to go and grab it? Yeah, please. There's, well, there's two of them. There's attached to them. Right, so this next method, 
um, of, of restraining the stallions. Um, it's, uh, I can't really remember what this is called now. It's called a nose ring. Yeah, that's it, nose it's ring, that's it. Line. I don't know whether many of you have, have seen this particular uh, method. Um, it looks severe, and people think, God, this is a, it's a, a really um, uh, tricky way. Um, but you literally just put it um, over the nose, and it looks like it's upside down. Um, so, put it over the top. And again, if you, so, and you can apply, apply pressure on here. We've got to remember though, you think, God, this is quite, but it's not, if you're holding a uh, chiffney and you're really raunching, that is a lot more severe because this is not even in the mouth. And if you've got a stallion that you really can't control or really bolting at the, we've had some that have bolted at the dummy and that can be really dangerous because they bolt at the dummy, the dummy is made of metal and they can, it can end up in disaster. So you have to have a way of controlling your stallion. So this, you literally clip the, clip the rope onto the top. And we put this on there sometimes just to protect their nose, because it can uh, sometimes make the nose a bit sore. So that it falls down. And the only thing I would advise to get these, we always put a, an extra strap here. It doesn't always come with that. Because what you don't want is a stallion that is really, really strong. And this comes off its head. So, and then you really are in trouble. So um, it's, it's a fairly simple, piece again. We don't use it very often. Uh, we only use it on a few stallions, but it can work really well. And it's not as severe as it looks, but it will stop the stallions in the trap, especially the ones that can rear or the ones that bolt with you. We do find it works really, really well. All right. So, thanks. and yeah, this is, this is the one without the, without, we, we've got the padding obviously over the front here. So that's one without so the rings. Yeah. The top there. So you can use it with this and that's the way we use it a lot of, a lot of the time. All right. Good. Right. So, has any questions come through, Faye, or nothing much? Simone? I think stuff that you can perhaps cover in your right. presentation shortly. Okay. Good. Um, the other thing I was going to just before we leave here is um, we're talking about stress and, 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 and how the stallions are housed. Every stable has a, a camera in here so we can keep a close eye on the, on the, uh, the stallions through CCTV. I think it's really important to see what the stallions look like when there's none of us human intervention around them because they can behave in a totally different way. And we're amazed at how they're housed. So this stallion, I mean, he stayed quiet, obviously. We're talking about, not Josh now. They <laughs> 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 don't want to ask you stuff, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, we've even had some stallions that you know, the stallion opposite them has upset them and they start box walking and, and just can just tell by their mannerism. So it's really important that they're settled on the stables. You give them a boo ball sometimes. Yeah, they? sometimes. Um, stress, stress, stress balls or whatever they're called. Yeah, just treat balls. Treat balls, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. So the basic, so the stallions that have never done anything before come, come to us complete virgins. Usually the first time we put them back in the stable after the collection, I like to scream and tell everyone about their. Um, experience in the collection area um, but then we also give them a bit of a treat ball and that kind of brings the stress that they can't like calms them down within five minutes. I, I cannot really go on amazing. enough about how to de-stress these stallions, how important it is to see quality. And I'll say once we see how Bart said about it, we said it really is so you know even who they're next to and you can get this herd environment. Sometimes these, the testosterone levels can be suppressed by in this environment as well with some stallions. So they behave differently with other stallions around them. You sometimes get this dominance as well. You've got a question, Faye? Yeah, I have. Um, it's from Jane, actually. Um, she said, if a stallion has not been ill, um, is in the same environment as normal, has good libido, uh, what could contribute to a dramatic loss in sperm count? It depends on the... Oh, it could be a whole heap of things. Some stallions need to be collected off more often. So it could be the fact that he's not being collected off enough. It might be the fact, it depends on, we would straight away ask how old he is, how often he's been collected from, when was the last collected from, because it might be the other way. If he's got small testicles, he can only be collected off once or twice a week. So it, it, there's a lot we can do. So if he hasn't changed his environment, because it seems he's uh, it's worth obviously always doing a blood off him just to see, making sure he's okay. Uh, taking his temperature. We you do temperature checks on these stallions twice yeah, a week. Twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah. Twice a week. Yeah. So everything has its temperature taken twice a week here, uh, just to make sure you're okay. Because sometimes you don't even realise there's an underlying problem. Uh, so 
everything's done on that side. So it's, it's always worth keeping an eye. The other thing we'll talk about is the other big issue, the, the big elephant in the room is, is the libido. Because some of these stallions really can have very poor libidos, and especially in the thoroughbred world, uh, where they're covering three or four mares a day, they can be in that breeding shed sometimes for half an hour, an hour. Um, so we've got another question. Yep, it's from Dave Butter. Oh, Dave. <laughs> hey, Dave. Talk about the thoroughbred on cue. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, he said, do you think lengthening the daylight hours with artificial lights helps the stallion's fertility? And if so, how many hours should they have? I think, I mean, Bart, I don't know whether you've got enough. Did you hear that question, Bart? I think we are speaking about uh, uh, alum lamps from, from Ireland. No, no, we're, uh, we're talking about the daylight hours, yes. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. We, have, we have a special, special lights. We, we make a test since two years now in one part of our stables with 12 stallions. Um, we get from, from a company of Ireland. Yes, yeah, yeah, Equilum, yeah. Special, special Equilum or something like this, special lights. And we are doing uh, from, from uh, the end of October, if the winter time starts, we um, make them the light on 17 hours a day going up. And then uh, in, the, in the summer, we put it down on a normal, uh, normal light. So it's only a normal daylight, about 10, 12 hours. But for the winter, to, to start the breeding season in January, February, March, we have the lights on 17 hours, a long daylight, and it helps quite a lot. So we make tests and we found out that in this, after six, seven weeks, the testosterone is going really up with 90% of the stallions. So it works quite a good. good so, so, so it works. It, so it works as well with the, with the stallions, it doesn't match, you're saying? Yeah, the thing is for you, it's not so interesting because your stallions are coming uh, and then after a few weeks they yeah. go. In my place, it's super because the stallions stay there all the year. And, so and we can talk, manage with the light very well. So it makes, makes the coats look good and also makes the seam look better, does it? I think, uh, okay, the test of, Strong weight is going up a lot. If the semen is going get better and more, I don't know if it's only these because we use a lot of stuff. We use yeah, supplements yeah, yeah. like yeah. Food, and we make we try to do everything. And the thing is, uh, if the semen gets better because the sun comes up, then yeah. in, in March, April, the sun comes up, the semen gets better. So then it's difficult to say it's the light or it's the, the supplement or so, but it's, I and think you, it's all together. All yeah, and you get a different, just going back to that question, you get a different type of, we find a different type of ejaculate in the winter time as you do in the summer. So we get a higher volume, lower concentrated product or ejaculate in the, in, the, in the summer. We get a more concentrated, lower volume sample in the winter, which sometimes makes it easier to freeze the semen. So, so the so the yeah. lights, yeah. That, we, that, 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 that. Sorry, I agree complete. Yeah. Yes. Good. 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 <laughs> you. That's, that's good. <laughs> so uh, um, we're going to talk about in a few weeks' time all about the semen parameters uh, and that's because that's that can go on forever. All about the tricky stallions, the subfertile stallions. There's so much we can do in the lab. But, um, so so lastly, yeah, libido is a bit of an issue, and we're coming a huge issue to some stallions. Um, not the stallion, we're lucky, um, but you know, it, it's where you house these stallions. We're going to talk about a bit more about libido upstairs, but I think you know, sometimes Bart, you, you, you feed some eggs, don't you? Sometimes with the stallions, is that right, or just a yeah. bit that helps? Yeah. We we uh, we we give some stallions if they have a bad libido, uh, we give them eggs, one or two eggs a day. Some you just throw in and they eat complete. Others you have to open it, but it works. Um, okay, what what is good if you have uh, okay if you have mares in heat, it's easy. Uh, in the winter you have no mares in heat, so you maybe uh, I freeze during the summer. I try to freeze a few liters of urine from mares who I know they will ovulate these days, 
um, to help them to to give a little bit of smell of a good mare um, for the libido. I even get from some friends of Colombia some stuff what's for human being. I tried, but not by myself. But I was going to say, was this you that tried it, Mark, or, or was this for the stallions? <laughs> for the stallions, uh, some stallions work with this, um, but not every, uh, not everybody, not every stallion. Yeah. So yeah, but I must admit, I remember you talking to me about that, and I must admit something we would try because. On some places, libido can be a huge, huge issue in trying to get, and the, I must admit, in the breathing shed, we're lucky, well, it's all plastic here, so we can't really touch anything, but uh, there's nothing worse than when you're in the breathing shed for hours on end trying to tease the stallion up. Most of these ones are here, but we'll come on to, 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 to that in a minute. Um, so just, I think we're just gonna go down the barn uh, very quickly, uh, just finish off this barn. So I think you've seen these boys last week, we've got Big Star in there, we've got Mercus Gem, uh, here we've got Antsy. Here we saw him last week, didn't we? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, oh, this is a new one. Uh, this is yeah, foreclosure. This is foreclosure of standard bread. So, yeah, you know, we've had about forty-seven different breeds, but oh, he's looking a bit grumpy tonight. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> oh, poor chap. Let's have a look at his uh, breeding here. So we have a complete mixture of, of stallions that, that come here from all different types. But uh, I think he wants to be left alone tonight, poor chap. Um, and which other ones can we see? Yeah. Good arm. How do you pronounce that, Sarah? <laughs> um, this is uh, Guardiana. This is a pretty chap. Yeah. And um, he's uh, just been tested for double dilute. He's here for freezing. Lusitana. Yeah. Um, he's been aimed at Grand Prix for next year. And uh, oh, we'll see. Shabbat. So he's he's uh, he was on yeah. the other night, wasn't he, he with was. Billy with Billy only, Terman? Don't you hear some Monday? Yeah, last chance on Monday. Uh, who's this one? It's another Spanish. This is another Spanish. Um, this is uh, Lorenzo. He is um, actually owned by Steve Denston Horses. Right. Um, yep. uh, he was originally bought to be used in the Disney Cinderella film. Um, and Put, it was, pulling the carriage? <laughs> was it? I don't know. Well, I haven't um, seen it. Um, it turned out that he was so good at dressage, he was competing instead. Yeah. Um, he has been a good Grand Prix as well this year. He's here to freeze. Good. And we've got Cassinato, we've just seen. Uh, out there he's. Uh, and uh, if they were ready for Christian when he arrives. Oh, we do need. Yes, we are. Uh, this is magic. This is magic quality. Oh, yes, magic yeah, quality. Yeah. We've, seen, we've seen him as well. Oh, by the Hales, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Daniel Mosley's ride. Um, I've put a post on Facebook about him tonight. Um, Look, looks like he's enjoying his hay. <laughs> yeah. So um, he's going to have a go with some three stars as a Is he by the, the, arc, the full sister? Arc. His mum is full sister to yeah, Arco. He looks just like Arco. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got two signs in here by Old Tom Old Lodster. The Old Lodster. This yeah. is uh, Forest Ranger. <laughs> He's coming. So this one's Forest Ranger. Forest Ranger. Yep. yep. They're both in here for freezing. Um, and we've got this tin counter here too. Oh, they're all coming to play for the camera tonight. So, yeah, that's, as you can see, we've got, uh, well, one empty stable, I think. Yeah, waiting for Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that just, that just sort of finishes our, uh, so we're gonna go upstairs now just to do a short presentation. Um, so, uh, thank you, EJ, really. Um, EJ's sort of instrumental in this, and like anything, yes, you can have all the, uh, the bells and whistles, but you need a good team behind you. She has a really good team behind you. I have an amazing Josh, team, best Jack. team. So uh, I wish to thank them. EJ has been yard manager of the year and then what, what else? Groom, Groom of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so she's well deserved. So I have to give her a bit of plug. But just as we're going out of here, I think we just want to look back at these stables um, again with, um, I say, AC Jackson. They built all the whole lot all around here. And, and I have to say they've done a a, a great job of the sales. Well, that's it. Yeah, finish off on, on them. And uh, if you can play the uh, next video, um, Rachel, while we wander upstairs.
a lot of dedication to keep your horse in the best condition and spillers have been helping with this longer than anyone with all this experience and our extensive range of tried and trusted feeds depend on us to help you keep your horse happy and healthy spillers your partners in care Thanks very much for all that. Um, can you hear me okay, Ra uh, Rachel? Yep, we can hear you fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just tell me about sharing now. Is that sharing okay? Yes, it is. That's fine. Brilliant. Well, just obviously, uh, thank you for, for staying with us. Um, this next uh, slide, we're just going to go through. Um, just see if I can find uh, my button. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, oh, um, so, we're just going to go, just a thank again, obviously Spillers uh, uh, for, for sponsoring this tonight. We're just going to go through a small presentation on about stallion management as well and cover some of the points we covered already um, uh, as well. So, we're going to look at health testing, um, testicular uh, condition physical condition, fitness and exercise, health and well-being, and obviously come back to libido as well. Um, but on the uh, sort of health and sort of the, the other side of things, health testing is, is paramount important. So all stallions really before the beginning of the season, before they start breeding, really should be tested for EVA um, and certainly CEM. Uh, we actually require EIA as well and strangles and also Klebsiella and Pseudomonas when they're having the swabs. Um, we've been in, a, in an era, and we're actually obviously in a pandemic now of, you know, of, of what's going on with COVID-19 because of the, obviously the movement of people is so widespread and how bad this is. And we've obviously seen this on the animal side as well uh, with, you know, with the equine flu. And it was always quite difficult, we found that is trying to explain to people how important this was having these health tests done. And I have to say, ever since the equine flu, it's, it's been much easier to get across. It's just absolutely paramount. Last year, there was an EVA outbreak, uh, as well as, you know, at the same time as the equine flu. Um, the equine flu isn't a notifiable disease, but the EVA is. And uh, this can really cause huge, huge issues. Uh, and it was, I think it was five cases across the UK. Um, uh, but this can be highlighted if the, um, if, if, if the pre-breeding examinations are done on these stallions. And the EVA is a viral disease, so it can be shed a respiratory, 
uh, from horse to horse. But unfortunately, with a stallion, if he catches this EVA, uh, and uh, he can actually, a certain amount of them can actually go on and start shedding it in with their semen as well, uh, you know, and it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get rid of. So it's very important that these horses are tested for it and that we remain uh, vigilant with any disease, really. And you can vaccinate against EVA as well, um, but it's two things always keep me awake at night. One is trying to pay for this place, uh, the bank balance, and also it, it's fire security, you know, especially as we're a quarantine center, we have to be squeaky clean, but it's the one thing that can shut me down, obviously, uh, overnight. So I'm not going to bang on it anymore, but it's, uh, it's, it's an important thing that we all have to. Do. So going back to some of the equipment, uh, we're going to rush, not rush through, but go these things that we've been through already. For years, you know, we used to have, um, uh, you know, with, with the Chiffney and stuff, uh, let's just see if I can get a laser pen. There we go. So we used to use chiffneys and ropes. And I used it for many, many years, uh, to be fair, with, with great success. Um, this is the sort of the method that we could use uh, with the halter uh, rein. Uh, I know, Bart, you're, you're not over keen on it. Uh, we don't use it on many stallions, I have to admit. It's not, a, it's not a, something that we use on, I think, maybe 5 or 10% of stallions, not even that, maybe 5% of stallions we, we will use it. Uh, especially on a young stallion, just so they haven't been bitted very much or something like that. But it's, we get all this from America uh, and it's not over expensive either and it, it can, can work well. This is the, the double rain system. Bart, are you still there? Oh, I can see you now, Bart, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you should be joining us for a drink. <laughs> no, it's that, that time of night now. So, um, but this is the system that I learned from Bart and you saw uh, in there as well. And I have to say, it's definitely worth a try if you've got a young stand. It does take a bit of getting used to, but it works well. We've got the nose ring, uh, again, that um, can, can really help for those stallions that really can uh, bolt. Uh, and uh, it, it, it really sort of can stop those stallions in their tracks and, can, and they respect it and it works well. So coming on to testicles, uh, again, this is the engine house of any stallion. Um, and people quite ask, and I think we had a question before, wasn't it, about the age of a stallion, wasn't it? I better put you on the spot now, Craig. Yeah. Uh, someone was asking when we can start collecting, yes, isn't it? that's right. Now, when, you can start, when do you start collecting off your stallion start? You know, what, you, what sort of age do you start off yours? Please, I cannot go here. What you uh, say? So when do, when do you start, what was the earliest age do you start collecting off your stallions? Uh, two years. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I've, sometimes somebody wants to, to say that this, they have uh, improved the stallion and then they want to start to collect and then he is even only 16 or 18 months and then you will see that it's too early. So normally uh, they should be uh, complete two years and more. And we, we find it, you know, we put, you know, depending on the breed, because you're pretty much all warm bloods, I think, out there, aren't you? And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas we see a whole range of breeds, anything from like you saw the little wet well section A's, uh, up to, you saw the whole range today, didn't you? You saw a little well section A and, you ha he, and opposite him was, a, a, was the great big Suffolk. We see these heavy horses. They quite often don't reach their sexual maturity at the age of four or five. And this can have a huge bearing on, on when they release this semen. So yes, we do a few two-year-olds. We like them obviously if they can be bitted and, and, and broken in a bit then. Uh, but we ideally, if I was to say, ideally from three onwards, really. Uh, um, but uh, it, it varies massively because we sometimes get these heavy horses in as a three-year-old and we say, look, let's bring them back in a year's time or something because they're just not mature enough. So, um, uh, so prior to full maturity, you know, you might not get the full volume that you would do if they were fully mature. So maturity of a stallion is important. We talked, I know we've gone on about it, but about the testicular size that can, um, uh, it's called the DSO, uh, daily sperm uh, output. It is an estimation. These calipers can be used to measure. I must admit, yeah, I don't, I, I don't like it. Do you, I don't know, do you measure the testicles, Bart, really over there or not really? 
but only with my head. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, but not 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 with a scan. Yeah. So if I if I if I touch them. Yeah. Yeah. So the best way, and I think, but not not really with this, is you can get the vet to actually scan them, and they can get proper measurements. And 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 there is some good research out there that if you if you get this formula and you measure the length, the width, the height, you can roughly work out uh, what that stallion should, should give you. It's not an exact science, but it should be giving you uh, per day. So if the testicles are 10 centimeters by seven centimeters by seven centimeters, uh, that gives you 256 uh, uh, mils and you, and you put it through this formula and that says you should be getting roughly 6.15 billion sperm cells. The average stallion gives you anything between six and 10 or seven and 10 billion sperm cells. Some will give you 15, some will give you four. But if you were to look at the average of stallions, it's between seven and 10 billion sperm cells in an ejaculate. Um, you know, and if you're doing the natural covering, I don't know if Dave, you're still on there or not. Um, um, but, uh, you know, you can work out the testicular volume on this and you can roughly work out how many covers a day uh, they can roughly perform just by measuring the testicles and uh, this is uh, you know there's a paper that's been produced on that uh, and it's presuming the requirements are roughly 1.5 billion sperms per cover so we can work out so the testicles obviously again the size of the testicles it will re relate to how much semen is produced from that stallion uh, We've got something called testicular degeneration. This is a, a broad term of the testicles failing, basically. It covers a whole multitude of uh, sins, really. And usually this is in the late teenage years. And this is where you can feel those testicles getting a bit softer. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, it, this is where you can start to see these first onsets of this. And this can start at any age, but generally the, the older they are. Um, and uh, it is down to that specific animal. And it's, you know, it can be a decline in testicular size. And obviously that can relate into porous semen quality, but, and uh, the amount they're giving you. And, and it's really non-reversible. There's not much you can do about it to turn it around when that uh, starts kicking in. But again, we have stallions and Bart, you might have some old stallions. That, I don't know what's the oldest one you, you've had, but crikey, we've had some that into their late twenties, even thirties, giving us great semen quality. It was, do you have some old ones there that are still producing good semen? Can you hear I me? I cannot hear you very well. Um, Sorry. Can you hear me now, Bart? Yeah, not very well. Try oh. again. I was saying, what's the sort of oldest stallions that you collect off? Uh, how old are they? There's some of the old stallions. Oh, my, my, my oldest at the moment is 27. Yeah. And he's still producing good quality semen. Yeah, he get he makes really good. But that is, I think that Sandro hit. Maybe you heard of him. <laughs> yes. Uh, he has super quality all his life. Um, okay, maybe he's not at ninety percent now, but something about seventy. But we have also stallions who are. Um, have a super quality if they were 10 or 11 and they are 17 or 18 and they go down and down. So this Sandoit is a special one with 27, so good semen. Yeah. It's not not for every stallion the same. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so you have older stallions um, that can produce really good semen quality, carry on at some later on. So we're talking about palpating the testicles. You can get these ones with abnormal size testicles. So, um, and we actually castrated this stallion and we did an epididymal sperm after him. Uh, actually in this stallion, this one testicle was very, very soft and really wasn't producing any semen at all, but this one was. Rotating testicles, some of you may have out there suddenly come across this and it looks like a huge bulge on the side. And that, basically what happened is this testicle is totally rotated round and he still produced fine semen and everything and sometimes it would flip back again um we don't see it very often but we do see it on some stallions where you get this uh, rotated testicle on that um you can have issues of of stallions that uh, kind of trauma and we've seen this on a couple of stallions where they've been collected from they've actually burst a blood vessel and uh and in this they've actually it's swollen up really quickly but actually 
this actually went down very, very well fairly quickly after uh, sort of a, a week. And we we're actually collecting back off this stallion amazingly about sort of two weeks, two to three weeks later, which was, I thought wasn't going to be possible. So um, there is some issues obviously with some stallions through trauma um, uh, and actually produce really good semen after this. So we're not going to talk too much about semen today. We're just going to do one slide on it because we're going to come back to the collection procedure on this, the next series and all about semen quality. But the average stallion does give you uh, about 40 to 50 mils, but I'm not too, I don't know if, how you find it, but I'm not too concerned about how, what the volume is, but it's the concentration of what they give you in there is the most important thing. So I'd rather have 10 mils from a stallion that uh, it gives you uh, uh, sort of 500 million sperms per mil than a stallion that gives you 100 mils uh, there are 50 million per mil. I don't know whether you understood that Bart or not or whether you could hear me, maybe not. Um, um, and no, the, I have a very bad sound. All right, okay, I'll, I'll keep talking then. <laughs> um, so, uh, and the, the problem, I cannot hear what you say. Don't worry, don't worry, that's fine. Um, the progressive motility, um, I presume everybody else hopefully can. Jamie, can you hear me okay, Jamie? Yeah, you fine, yeah. loud and clear. There must be the German-English connection going on. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, so, uh, and seven, and the average styling gives you seven to 10 billion sperm cells. There are other mass management issues. We've got, you know, obviously housing, proximity to mares, handling and stress. Um, stallion fatigue can c come into it if they're doing a lot of covering obviously that's uh, or collecting that can obviously reduce the sperm output uh, considerably if they're doing more than that stallion's testicles can can take pain we haven't really touched about pain and pain I think can be oh I keep saying this, these things are so important pain can be the underlying issue that people don't realize there's a problem so pain can lead to ejaculation failure they can produce the unwillingness to, to, to mount the, the mare or, or, or the horse. And I think it's really important. We actually get our stallions looked at pre-season by a chiropractor or an osteopath. And during the season, although it's a bit difficult at the moment, get the stallions checked as well. The stallion's health and well-being is absolutely paramount during the season. Uh, and to make sure they're fully fit, they've been on the walker, they're really in that really tip-top condition to be able to perform. Now, there's be a lot of you out there saying, oh, well, yeah, I just dragged the stallion out the stable and he performs, that's fine. But there's a lot of stallions that need that pain management uh, and uh, that fitness and really to, to make sure that they can give the, the samples or cover the mares. Um, because we hear so many cases of stallions that won't ejaculate or, or, or you know, when they're covering a mare or collecting off them, and not always, but a lot of time, it can be a pain-related issue. It can come down to genetics. There are certain genes out there that actually uh, can have an influence on the stallion's fertility. We're going to talk about genetics uh, later on on, a, on another webinar, um, but um, there are apparently 37 candidate genes that identify the importance of stallion fertility. So soon we, we should be able to take a... Um, uh, you know, look at the genetics of a certain stallion and actually pick out those genes to see if that stallion is more likely to be a subfertile stallion or not. But this is a really interesting side of things, looking at genetics and, uh, and, and genes. And uh, I think we've got a lot more to understand from it. So it's a really interesting part in, in my side, seeing how it influences uh, the, the subfertile stallion. We're going to do one on subfertile stallion at a later date. So we keep coming back to this saying, a happy horse equals happy semen. And it is so true. It's so true. If that stallion is happy and, and not stressed, it can make all the difference. So I made this mistake many years ago. We had an Irish draft stallion. And I isolated him in a box, put him on his own. And he came out like a raging bull every time and literally took off with me and he was stressed. And we didn't sort of he, yeah, he, he, he wasn't kept, he's kept away from the others. And it's one mistake and we all, you know, I've learned, learned from my mistake over the years. So we try and avoid isolation if possible. So try and normalize the stallions as best as we can. We try and, as you see, get the stallions turned out if we can, if possible, go on the horse walk or be exercised. 
this monitoring behavior, the, the CCTV that you see here, is, works so well so we can actually see the stallions uh, to see if they're stressed out and we can pick up traits very, very quickly. Um, and, and again, it, it can affect the semen quality without even you knowing. Uh, regular interaction, interaction, and we actually even given uh, some stable uh, toys as well, because some stallion owners don't want them turned out, they don't want, so we've got to try and keep their mind occupied. I really find stallions are, they're incredible animals, and I always love, love working with stallions, because they've just got a different way of thinking. You've got to be in tune in the way that a stallion thinks, to try and think, what is it they want, whether they're in the breeding shed or in the stable, and you can sometimes pick out on these, and, and it really, really helps. A well ventilated area again you know um, we thank uh, AC Jackson for doing the stables and uh, you know having these light ridges this is you you uh, I don't know Bart whether you can hear me but this is again another thing I got from Germany is having it very well lit and these are roof ridges uh, I think a lot of places in Germany have these roof ridges for the light don't they they have yeah uh, that's I, right and it helps with the ventilation. And we built this, these barns specifically for stallions, nothing else. So our old place, the stallions couldn't look out. So we got them all to look out. Thank you, Eva, for these lovely pictures. Um, and uh, so we, 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 we got them especially for that. Obviously, we talked about the feed and, and weight management. Uh, obviously, with spillers and you know, Professor Pat Harris has gone through the importance of a well-balanced diet and, and nutritional feed, and it helps all these, you know, uh, it's essential for breeding stallions, it's important for libido, it's important for the semen, uh, and obviously body condition as well. Uh, we did speak about this, we're gonna speak about this in a few weeks time, is about the, the feed supplement. There are different fertility supplements out there, and I know Bart, you, I think you use one out in, in, in Germany. Uh, they, as I say, they're not gonna reverse um, testicular degeneration, but they can help some stallions just creep up that little bit more. And especially when it comes to freezeability of semen, uh, uh, it can help the membrane structure. It's got amoeba oils and things like that, and it can help uh, strengthen that mem cell membrane, uh, you know, especially during the, the chilling and freezing process as well. So, poor libido uh, and, and sort of non fatigue related issues. So, housing and where are these stallions and we have had our stallions that we have had to use outside facilities to collect from them they don't like the indoor environment uh we have had uh, um you know look at the body condition we've got a lovely teaser mares here you can see we have a whole range and sometimes we'll tease with one mare and they might jump on the other uh so or we'll tease with a little pony and they jump on the t on the, on the dummy mare so we have to be quite inventive in what a stallion needs. And as soon as you can lock into how that stallion thinks, it can make a different one, so diff a huge difference. So uh, a change in teaser mare and color uh, and uh, altering variation in the teasing method as well. Um, so, and there's non-restrictive handling. Now, most stallions need restrictive handling, obviously, but there are some we find are put off by uh, the, 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 the person handling that stallion. So it's. I always like to see how someone handles a stallion. They want to be quiet and calm, and and uh, if there's always jabbing it in the mouth every every two seconds, uh, that can really have a negative play on the stallion. So it's trying to be relaxed with the stallion. I think if you're relaxed, he's more relaxed. If you're tense, and I know when we're having a difficult case collecting and everyone's tensed, that's the worst day of collecting. That's when they start failing and and everything else. So. Um, uh, other things is uh, poor libido can be frequency of collections. Um, uh, and obviously, it's really important if you've got an issue with that, it's your mare management. So if you've got a, a stallion that has slightly fertile semen, it's important to get the mare absolutely precisely right for that uh, uh, insemination. And that can play a bigger part as trying to fix the semen. So in other words, you want to be AIing as close to uh, the mare ovulating as you can, whereas if you've got good semen, you can put it in 24 hours sometimes before quite easily, and the semen's still going to be okay. So mare management can play that part. Um, and, uh, you know, we, 
pre-season book size is estimations. It's, uh, yeah, we we'll maybe talk about this on, a, on another subject, but it's working out how many mares that stallion can physically do. And this is more for the thoroughbred world, uh, but there's so much you can do to estimate. If you overwork a stallion, uh, it's, it's like a snowball effect. They start covering mares and then come April, May time, um, they start to cover two or three or four mares a day and they can't physically, well, they can physically do it, but the semen can't. And those mares start returning and very quickly you get huge amounts of return. But if you actually start only doing two mares a day, you, could, you, you can actually get very good fertility results. So in other words, what we're trying to do is trying to find out what can that stallion realistically do. And we see the same with the AI side. Some stallions we collect off can literally only do one mare per collection. Some can do five or six. So, uh, um, so Bart, on your stallions, uh, do you have some stallions that are, I presume you can split the semen quite a few ways can't you i presume you have some very good production every stallion slightly different in the amount of semen they produce Can I, you cannot, you know, I i don't hear the question don't, don't worry um some how much uh, how many ways or how many times can you split the uh, collection of uh, some of your good stallions for for intermediate mares yeah yeah yeah, okay, we, we, have, we have another system as the most of the people. Um, we, we work the semen out uh, on a concentrated dose. And so our vets at home and the vets who are driving, they only get um, a concentrated dose. So they inseminate only with uh, 100 billion of semen. And normally you give away five to six, so we can inseminate five mares or make pregnant five mares with one dose what you ship away. So yeah. in this case, if we have a good stallion, we can do 20, 25 mares. Wow. Wow. Crikey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, but that's, that's just because of the system for yeah. insemination. They do a deep insemination like, like with frozen semen. I think, I think when we do our webinar in a few weeks' time on uh, all on semen assessment and that, that'll be a really interesting topic and, uh, on, that, on that side and the new advances on semen quality. Yeah, we can do. So on this next slide, we're talking the, the inability to mount or ejaculate. We've come, we touched on this several times, but it's especially when you're working with the older stallion, as you can see here, one's had it, having a massage and getting all his... his, his we're going to talk about next time how we bandage the legs up, how we get all these ready for, for, for the dummy mare. Um, but the pain investigation, I mean, putting one butte, I think it's a better way uh, than actually a stallion, if he's suffering from pain, will have a bigger consequence on semen quality. So it's important to find out where the pain is and to sort it out um, because not sorting the problem out will have a direct consequence on not just his inability maybe to ejaculate, which he might do, but his inability to, his semen quality is gonna drop. So uh, the management, especially these older stallions and quite often with these eventing stallions when they've retired later on, we quite often don't get them until they're late teens. So we've got to manage them and then suddenly expect it to cover sort of, uh, or, or collect off and, uh, every single day. So the management and using sort of physiotherapy and everything else in these stallions they're, they're athletes at the end of the day in a, in a different format so they have to be looked after in that way as well so just coming on to the last couple of slides you know um sort of alternative breeding option we're very lucky in the sport horse world you know if we have got a, a libido issue or one that doesn't produce much semen we can actually freeze the semen and we're going to do a webinar all about freezing semen uh, most probably in about a month's time because we're doing it every other week and and what you should get in a dose and, and, and so on when you're AIing your mare. So all about the freezing, collection frequency, you know, when it suits you, you know, and his needs. So when we're freezing semen, we can do it every day. We can do it every other day or every third day, depending on what that stallion needs. So that's the beauty about when we're doing off season, we can bank a load of semen uh, uh, for, 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 for the future. Uh, and we can bank the semen, you know, when, when there's no time pressures. And obviously one ejaculate is, is, can be used and split several, several ways. So really in conclusion, you know, we've, there's certain things we've got to look at the stallion. We've got to look at the health, the well-being. Obviously, the, 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 it's got to have all his health tests done. 
the stable environment, how that stallion is, is kept and looked after, getting into that routine is so important. Um, covering uh, and, and semen collection environment, we're going to talk about that in two weeks' time. Routine, I should really hype routine in, in red and trying to stop them getting stressed out when we can optimize the stallion's uh, fertility. But yeah, I keep coming, a happy stallion usually equals happy semen. So the next webinars that we're doing here on the 16th of July, get your diary out, put it in, get, get your Friday or your Thursday night uh, booked away. I know lockdown is slightly easing, but uh, I still don't think you'd be going to the pubs just yet. So uh, hopefully we can still give you that entertainment. So uh, semen collection process uh, on the 16th, we're gonna look at preparing uh, for semen collection, uh, semen collection process. How you train your standing onto a dummy mare? With us, somebody's asked me that tonight. We're gonna show you how we can go about that and all the different ways that you can collect semen off these standing. It might be not for the faint hearted, that night, I must admit, we should have to do it after nine o'clock, I think, um, for um, after the, what you call it, hour, what's watershed. it called? Watershed, that's the word I'm looking for. And on the 30th of July, I'm sorry if this, I know so many people have wanted to watch this, but we're trying to do it in an order. So we've done sort of stallion husbandry tonight, two weeks time, we're gonna do the collection process. And two weeks after that, we're gonna go to all about semen assessment on fresh and chilled. And then after that, we're gonna do all about frozen semen. So just bear with us. I know a lot of people wanted to watch that one earlier on, but we're just trying to do one at a time. And what semen parameters should you expect when you're AIing a mare? So one for your mare owners as well. And processing semen from the subfertile stallion, there's so much we can do uh, out there. Uh, I love this picture here as well. Um, this, is from the, this, is, this is from Germany. You can see the double rain system here. Can you hear me, Bart? This is the, the rain system here from- Yes, I still hear you. Yeah, so this is the rain system that you were talking about here. But uh, the very old picture of how they used to collect, but I'll show you some old footage as well in, in uh, uh, of the collection one as well. So just to, oh, I've lost my thank you. There should be a, oh, there it is. My thank you. Thank you to everybody for, 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 for watching this. This is, again, I think if you watched the first webinar when we, we collected semen from, maybe I'll show a bit of this in a couple of weeks time. We collected semen from uh, about eight bull elephants with us. Uh, great lady M. Kalum is here out in South Africa in October and the work that we're, we're doing uh, collecting freezing off elephants which was great but we'll touch about that for next time so really that's the end of my presentation uh, so but before we go now I think uh, if I unshare this and so um, Rachel can you hear me now I go on. Rachel? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, I was muted. Right. Uh, yes, I just, um, am, I on, am I on the screen still, Rachel? I'm still on the screen. Yeah, I, I've lost myself now, so <laughs> I don't know where I've gone, but as long as I'm still on there, am I? Yep. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I've, anyway, I'll just pretend. I'm... <laughs> have we got an answer? Have we got a prize winner for our prize, for Spill the Spillers Prize tonight? Uh, we have indeed, yes. Um, so first of all, the actual weight of the Suffolk mare was 746 kilos. And congratulations to Alex Freaks, who guessed the closest at 740. And that was pretty close. Well done. That was Alex? Freaks. All oh, right. Right. Excellent. Right. Alex Freaks. Right. Well, well done, Alex. You've got um, a load of prizes winging your way. Uh, and for some reason, I still can't. Let's see if I ah, that's better. I'm back on, back on there now, so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so, and we just really got to thank Spillers for for sponsoring tonight and putting that on. Have we got? Have you got a slide of what's on next week? Have you got any questions, Faith? We've got a few. Yes. So, um, oh, just by putting this on. Uh, oh, yeah, about the horse trust to start with. As I said, you will get an email after. Please, can you donate to the to the horse trust? Uh, again, you know, a, a really worthwhile charity. They were meant to be our sponsors for our open day this year, but sadly it was cancelled. So, please, if you can uh, uh, spare a few quid for them, that'll go a really long, long way. Um, 
What's your question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so somebody's asked about um, collecting from a young stallion and whether that alters the behaviour of the stallion um, to compete, you know, for their competition career. So, so collecting off young stallions, can it alter their... But we get asked this question a lot. If we bring a stallion into the breeding shed, a young one, is it going to go out like a raving lunatic? Oh, uh, and, um, and, and the question is, sometimes you just don't know. Uh, generally, I find if the stallions are really quiet, they generally stay quiet. If they are a bit of a jack the lad, it can push them that bit way forward. But I always like the stallions ideally backed and handled to a certain degree before they come to us. Uh, and then there's some sort of management already in place rather than coming to us really green, but hardly being bitted. It, 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 it makes it the job a lot harder. So ideally, um, yeah, if it's, uh, um, that they've done a little bit before they come to us. Um, I think, can you hear me? Yeah, I can see you, Bart. You're getting darker and darker. Okay, I think it's not so difficult. I will, I will try to send you a video how I used to do with young stallions because um, if they are used to the collecting hole, they're not afraid of the dummy, and you work a little bit with the dummy and one mare just to help them to get okay and then to help them to get up I think if you do one time they learn very very fast and then it's just you need a little bit of time and stay quiet but then it's a very easy thing to learn young stallions yeah I will try to send you a video how how we do maybe, well, maybe you can if, uh, if you're if you're happy on the next next one I think because your knowledge is just so much when it comes to stallions it'd be great to have you when we're doing the the collection one which would be which would be great so yeah, yeah. i will send you some yeah thank you okay that'd <laughs> uh, be great and uh okay. i think we better and, and uh uh have you got another slide there um rachel i think i saw a slide come up yeah so just some other dates for the diary next week on the 9th of july uh yeah i think this sounds Amazing. It's quite good to have the elephant in the background and then coming on to the East Africa uh, with West Kington Stud. Uh, I've been speaking to Tessa tonight and, uh, you know, a great supporter of hers. Uh, and God, God, what this lady doesn't know, you know, uh, is, is she just knows everything about breeding. So next Thursday night should be absolutely brilliant. I think they've got a live link to South Africa, which is just fantastic to pull off. Um, and, you know, as we all know, West Kington, uh, a great you know, do the same sort of thing with off with the freezing and have been doing it uh, just as long, uh, if not longer, and have got a huge reputation. So that should be a really good thing for next Thursday night. Uh, and then, oh yeah, we're well, back to us on the 16th of July, semen collection and processing. And then on the two big firm, 23rd of July, we're doing the uh, assessment and lab work. So is that the last slide, Rachel, I presume? Because uh, if it is, I just really want a, a few thank yous. Oh, and the 2020 virtual futurity evaluations um, entries are open as you can see on there and the 30 until the 31st of August um, stallion owners encouraged yeah to enter their stock so please enter your stock for the virtual futurity evaluations obviously with COVID we can't do anything else at the moment but just really to thank thank you Bart uh, I have to admit you know having you here in the background it's uh, it's just quite brilliant I've known you for a long long time and yeah, we might not do things exactly the same, but uh, we all get to the same, we've got the same conclusion. We pretty much sing on the same hymn sheet. So I really, your, your comments are so valued. And I think people in this, who listen to this will really, really appreciate um, uh, your, your, your words of wisdom. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Um, I really appreciate your, you know, uh, sticking with us right to the end and talking about <laughs> your wonderful boys. So uh, again, thank you very much for, for being participants in this in this webinar and thank, thank you very much for having me and no that's great uh, really appreciate that and thank you uh, professor pat harris uh, yeah invaluable as we said that you know the feed is the is the building blocks really for any horse uh, and especially for a, a working stallion so uh, thank you pat uh, for that side of things and um, and thank you, William Bedell, on the Horseway Bridge, that side of things. You know, uh, we use that all the time and find that actually instrumental. And obviously, thank you for H.E. Jackson helping support tonight. 
uh, as well. But the biggest thank you is obviously to Spillers. That, you know, without them sponsoring, I think they've done quite a few of these, uh, we wouldn't be able to put these on. So thank you to them. And to my team and Faye, I don't know if you can, you can, you can see her there, but anyway, uh, thank you Faye for, she's been in the background firing questions at us. And uh, well, the last one is thank British Breeding. Uh, really, you know, they put this on, uh, you know, there's no sort of profit out there. <laughs> they, they work their socks off to put these on every single nut, every single week. And I think they're doing a marvellous job, especially in the current climate that we're at. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's hopefully great viewing. But please bring your comments. We really want to hear from you. And I do, one thing that keeps us going is the comments mm. and feedback that you give to us. That's one thing that makes us carry on doing this every week when we get the email. So, and we don't mind having constructive criticism as well. You know, tell us if we want something to do something different. More than happy to try and do something else. So it's, uh, well, it's a bit like the two Ronnies. It's good night from me and it's good night from you. But, but thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully all soon. And uh, in two weeks time, uh, we'll be back here talking about semen collection. So thank <coughs> you very much for, for, uh, for everyone staying to watch. Thanks, Thomas. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.